For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither principalities, no power, nor present, nor future, no height, nor depth, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus our Lord. One of the best things about A Wrinkle in Time to my 10-year-old self was how it expanded my whole view and imagination of how wild and outrageous it was, of how it flew open the doors of my mind of what just could be possible and what love through no limits of space and time might look like. So for those of you who haven't read the book or seen the movie, here's the premise. The main character, her father, has achieved this. He is tessered. He has figured out what no human has yet and has figured out how to tesser and how to wrinkle time. Um, but he's lost. And so Meg is going through a time of being bullied um, at school and trying to hold on to hope uh, that her father is still alive, that he will be returning. And, and goes through a lot of trouble of not fitting quite in because of that. And her younger brother has connected and found these three different beings that have come to visit, that have heard Meg's father's cry, and have come and found the house and the kids, and have been connecting um, with them, and have come to then take them to find their father. And they start the trace and the search, and end up at a planet where flowers are the best gossips, and they talk in color, and find out where their father has been, and trace him all through, um, but then find that he's at Kazmataz, which is um, the home planet of the it and the evil that um, is taking over the universe, and a place that um, the three beings cannot go to because it is all darkness and they are light. And so they try to go back home, since this is no longer a search mission, but a rescue mission. Um, but Meg's desire to find her father transforms that tesser back home to land them back on Kazmatas. And we'll get to that clip in a minute. But in order for all of this to happen, there's a big thing that Meg has to do. She has to figure out how to love herself, all of who she is, all of what she loves and her brilliance and all of her faults. And this is the power of this movie. Whether we're 10 years old or entering middle school and figuring it all out of who we are and what we like and what we don't like and wishing we were someone else, or whether that's still happening as adults. Because at some point in our life, we've all wanted to be different than who we are. We've all wanted to 
be in some way, in some way that would make our life better or easier or be more accepted. And so in this movie is a glimpse into God's command of love, love that nothing can separate us from except maybe ourselves if we choose not to allow ourselves to access it because we feel like we don't deserve it. So how do we follow the two greatest commandments of our faith? To love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself. How do we love ourself? How do we love all of who we are? And I'm not talking about being aware of things that we need to work on and get better on, because we all have those. But what Meg learns is where to use her faults when. For everything, there is a season and a time. So how do we know ourselves? How do we love ourselves so well that when we're in different chapters of our lives, we know what part of ourself to live into and what part of ourself to channel for that moment to be all of who God has created us to be. And, and so for Meg, this struggle happens in the tesser. She has a lot of trouble tessering because she doesn't want to come back as herself. fearfully and wonderfully made, to remember the God who has knit us together in our mother's womb, who has formed our very being in the depths of the earth. How do we know our worth? How do we sink into that and celebrate it? Who is there to teach us? 
For the fathers who are and who were, we celebrate and give thanks. And for all of the others who have been a part of our life to open our eyes, our hearts, and our souls to that love, to that depth, to that intention. It's important to love ourselves because nothing else can be done if we don't. How do we love others if we can't love ourselves? How do we share that love if we can't share it with ourselves? One of the most powerful moments later on when Meg is rescuing her brother Charles Wallace is when she is able to fully say and claim not only what her faults are, but that she deserves to be loved. Every single human being, every single aspect of creation deserves to be loved. God has knit each and every one of us together in our mother's wombs. All of us are made in the divine image of God. So no matter anything else, we can start from the foundation of knowing that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, of knowing that we are loved by God and that we can love ourselves and start there. And Meg starts to figure it out, and she starts to claim the fullness of that. And that's when everything starts to shift. That's when she's able to find her dad, and not only find her dad, but rescue him. And then not only find him and rescue him, but find Charles Wallace and rescue him when he gets taken over by evil. But none of us go this road alone. And so, no matter if our fathers were not there, may there be villages and a Mrs. What's-It and a Mrs. Who and a Mrs. Witch who give us gifts so that we can understand who we are, so that we can find love for ourselves, and that we can put that to good work. Part of Meg's faults is her constant questioning and doubting and inability to trust. Um, Hugh sang for us a song that raised doubts of looking at all of the lost stars in the sky and wondering where God is. And there is a time when doubts and not being able to trust and the constant questioning is something that harms us. But on a world built on evil and deception, those are the exact things that Meg needed to make her way to find her father and then to find and rescue her brother. So how do we know who we are and love every single aspect of who we are enough to be able to use all of who we are as we go through life? Knowing when a part of us is needed and necessary and to live into that, and one that it's not, and we need to work on quieting it and letting it not rule and direct us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. All of the events, all of the choices since the birth of the universe that has brought us together, that God created and knit us together in such a way that there is something that only each of us and that one unique special combination can accomplish. And so how do we trust that? How do we honor that enough to step forward in it? 
Meg finds her way, and it's something that I hope that we can too. Barry? May this be a Father's Day of love. May this be a day where we know all of who we are and we celebrate all of who we are and we find a way to live into it in the freedom that Meg has found from facing her fears and from facing the parts that she did not like about life or about herself. We have a commitment that I would offer for this week moving forward. Um, Meg was able to do this um, because of her relationship with her father, because of how strongly she believed in him and how he taught her in that belief and, and worked with her. I understand that that is not the case for everyone. Um, and so for those of you who are able to reach out to fathers, to connect with them, to share with them what they helped you believe in, do so. And even if it's just one little piece um, to find something in the midst of the powers of evil and the forces of wickedness to hold on to. And if there can't even be anything there with the father, may there be something somewhere for some other male mentor in your life. And may you connect or reach out to them um, and talk with them about what they helped you believe in and the difference that they made. And may we be those sources of hope and of love that connects us, those witnesses to the love of Christ that nothing in this world can separate us from. And as we go forth to make that commitment this week, there are members of our congregation who have made a special commitment that will be starting a week from this morning. And so I'd like for the mission trip um, folks to come on up uh, mission team.
And we want to thank you for the commitment that you have made and for the witness of the love that goes through space and time that you will be witnessing to. Um, and if you want to turn around and look at the screen in a couple of minutes, I have some questions for you. So today we commission these Epworth family members who will show the love of Christ by working at Camp Mechuana and the community in Winthrop, Maine. Friends, what is the mission of the church? The mission of the church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And what form does this mission take? The forms are as various as the forms of God's love, yet the center is always Jesus Christ. In the end, it is always by God's grace and mercy that needs are met and transformation takes root. So mission team, do you promise to share the love of Christ as you serve Winthrop, Maine? And do you promise to receive the love of Christ offered to you from Winthrop, Maine? And do you promise to join in the transformation Christ has already begun in Winthrop, Maine? And do you promise to let Christ transform you while you serve Winthrop, Maine? And will you promise to bring that transformation home and use it to lead our family here? Our team has made a lot of promises, family, and now it is our turn. Church, will you promise to pray for these, our family members, as they go forth to share and receive God's Christ's love and work for and find God's transformation in Winthrop, Maine? We will, with God's help. And church, will you promise to ask for and listen to their testimony when they return? We will, with God's help. And will you promise to prayerfully respond in joining in the transformation they might call us to upon their return? We will, with God's help. May we join in prayer all together. Ever-loving Christ, as we commission your servants, we pray that you will strengthen them for this work, build them up in love, and empower them to be ambassadors of your transformation in this world, both in Minford Wayne and here in Cockeysville, Maryland. Amen. I got stuck. <laughs> Minthrop Wayne. <laughs> okay. But for Winthrop, Maine, here we go. Thank you all for your prayers. Uh